I'm going for two pounds. That's a $2,000 week. And you'll see it on this segment of the Gig Geezer. If this is your first time checking out the Gig Geezer, if you're a returning visitor of the Gig Geezer, hey, thanks for coming by. And if you would not mind, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. Initially, this is going to be a segment in which I would document how I make $300 or more in a day while operating out of my spinner slash cargo van. But that kind of evolved into something else, somewhat unplanned, unscheduled, and of course, unexpectedly. How did this come about? Well, this today, at least today, is Sunday, June 25th, 2023. Yesterday, Saturday, June 24th, 2023. My plans yesterday was to take the day off while spending probably most of my time working on changing the brakes of this van. Well, I did that. I did change my brakes yesterday. In fact, it cost me, at least to change the brakes, $86. That's right, an $86 complete, well, an $86 brake job. And how did I do that? I did it myself. <laughs> um, now, there were some other costs involved. I had to buy um, some WD-40, some brake cleaner. I had to buy a set of half inch sockets I did not know that I, I was I, I um, lacked a, a complete set of half inch sockets and also had to buy um, online a cylinder a brake cylinder toolkit. Well, those are costs that I really don't want to associate with a brake job because I can use those things for for my other vehicles. In fact, the cylinder toolkit definitely because I own Fords. I have a Taurus right off to my left or here at the gig compound and my F-150 just up ahead to my right. And so the rear brakes on Forge require that you use a cylinder tool, whereas the front brakes, you can use a C-clamp to push the brake cylinders in so that you can change the brakes. And that's one thing I kind of miss with having Nissans, even though I'm not a big fan of Nissans anymore, is that when you change the brakes on the Nissan, all you have to do is replace out the, right, replace out the pads and keep it moving. I finished changing the brakes much sooner than I expected yesterday. So when I, once I got pretty much close to doing the brakes, I happened to notice on my phone, there was a freight order um, out of, for me, where I'm at in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area, over in Sumter, which is like a 40, 45 minute drive. Um, there, was, there was a freight opportunity um, in which what ultimately what it was was, um, delivering 1,900 pounds or 100 foot, square foot um, slabs of concrete, little 12 by 12 slabs of concrete, and that ultimately played that ultimately paid $109.87, driving about 10 miles to the drop-off location, and I managed to stack on top of that a roadie from the Walmart across the street. While the roadie offered sixteen dollars and twelve cent or eighty two cent, but it was sixteen dollars suffice to say, the customer tipped me in cash ten dollars for dropping off a garden sofa, and um, also what I did yesterday, and this was all in less than three hours, so this was pretty much a cameo opportunity in which I said, "Oh, what the hell? I'll just go out there and I'll just do something just to be doing." In fact, I had the queen with me on the Sumter trip. And then when I came back to Columbia, I happened to, so I happened to catch a $32 eight cent CC pizzas, um, large, large opportunity. It paid as offered. And so in less than three hours, I made $168 and change. So that put me for the week at $1,787 and 23 cent and about 48 hours worked. And so I'll be starting today with a very highly conceivable opportunity. If I do as I as I am known to do, I should make two pounds and you're coming along with me. And by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm also gonna share some other numbers with you or some other background so that you can kind of have um, an idea how I'm doing so far this month and also for the year. Now, year to date, overall, I'm at 
$44,398.85. So I am on track to make anywhere between $90,000 and $100,000 this year. And one of the things that I mentioned in some of my earlier segments of the Gig Geezer this year and upon early ownership of this Sprinter slash cargo van was that my goal is to make 100000 this year because I make 100000 That takes me into another uh, realm of financial work in which I can deal with commercial lending to possibly scale, scale my operations. Now, if I just count van-only earnings, anything that's associated with the van so far into 2023, I'm at $41,926.92. And so year-to-date monthly, overall, I'm averaging $7,655 a month. And year-to-date van only so far this year, I'm at $7,228.71. And average per day so far after 175 days in 2023, overall, at least based on when I'm basing on 141 days work and just van only earnings, I'm at $297.35 a day. Now I mentioned in this segment to get geezer that at a minimum, my goal is to be at three to earn, make on average at least $300 a day. Although the stated goal has been 400 to $500 a day. So at $297 a day, I'm right at what I've been talking about. In fact, that would have been justification to do that segment of the gig geezer about how I make $300 in a day. Or I could even say that, I, I could even say $300 a day. Key words here, in a day and a day. One other, one other bit of groundwork as far as stats are concerned. How do I compare to at least this time last year, one year ago, as of June 24, 2022 and June 24, 2023. I've already shared at least year to date that I'm at, I'm at $44,400, just rounded up. Last year, at June after June 24, 2022, I was at $37,994.15. So that's a difference of $6,470 or 16.85% 16, 16 or rounded up 17%. So I'm at 17% more than I was last year. And I posed on this segment of the gig geezer. Well, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good increase in earnings. Given that on a lot of W-2 jobs, you may be lucky to get a two, maybe even a 3% raise um, annually. So, um, and I attribute a lot of that to having um, completed the transaction for this Sprinter slash cargo van because it has, as I've often said as well, given me a greater capacity of earnings. Now, my pathway so far as to what I've been doing this year has been primarily by, by two sources, gig apps, mainly gig apps, but I will go as far as to say that my reliance on certain apps have flipped. And this is something that I've shared in recent segments of the Gig Geezer, and I'll share those, those, those numbers um, very shortly. The other is that I have had a few or a handful of brokered opportunities, six in all in 2023. That's not what my goal had been. My goal had been, as I've stated, at least in this segment of Gig Geezer, it had been to get to have one, maybe two brokered opportunities a week. And somehow, at least in my strategy, it would it would put me in a position to make anywhere between $2,000 and $2,500 a week. So if I'm able to get to 2000 this week, it would only be the third time this year. But it's significant because I'm getting there. And that's the main thing about um, this segment of the gig user, if I get there today. Now, since I mentioned that most of the money has been earned on gig apps, my leading gig apps in 2023, as I kind of gave an example in this segment of the gig user, as of today, Roadie has been my number one earner overall at $6,210.05. Instacart has been my second um, earner, top earner at $4,745.11. And Delivered has been my third top earner at $4,209.16. So that's from January 1st until today. However, in recent months, um, looking back to May and June this month so far, Rody still has been number one at twenty nine hundred twenty eight dollars and fifty one cent, but freight has been number at number two at seventeen hundred ninety four dollars and eleven cent, 
And DoorDash, surprisingly, is number three at $1,037.56, somewhere in there. Now, I mentioned about being less dependent on gig delivery, gig food delivery apps. A good, a good case in point is so far this work week, I have not been able to get onto Uber Eats. I've not been de I've not been deactivated, but at least according to what they have explained, um, driver support there's there's an issue with them having one, first gaining access or obtaining my background check, which there was one done in May, and um, but I suspect that the issue is somehow Uber's system is now having issues with recognizing which account is which. Now, I have, as I've shared, um, been active on the Uber Rideshare app since 2016. And in 2017, um, Uber Eats was uh, added on to that account. Well, I was deactivated from Uber Eats in December. To, well, I was deactivated from Uber Eats in 2020. And I understand why I was deactivated. Um, but I had put in like 182 deliveries. But weeks or months later i was activated on uber eats on a sec on a different account so i've been operating separate accounts a separate rideshare account and a separate um uber eats account and somehow now i suspect the system is now having issues with that and so it's like well we're just gonna put your ass on pause until we figure it out well so far in june my reliance on gig food delivery apps, the on-demand apps of DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and Instacart, um, I've earned so far $1,629.28, or um, that's, that's comprised just under 24% of all of my income in the month of June. Um, June of last year, those same, my gig food delivery apps are the um, on-demand apps they comprised 85% of my income. In fact, it was $5,398.27. And in June of last year, I made $6,350.81. So I have flipped those numbers, that reliance, as what I've been sharing in recent weeks of um, segments of the Gig Geezer. So that's all the background, all the boring shit. Um, hopefully, you're still with me at this point, and I thank you if you are. And again, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. And so we're going to go out there and try to make some money today. And hopefully, at the end of the day, I'll be sharing how I have made two pounds, $2,000 or more uh, this week. I've not yet officially started the day. I'm actually headed to, as what my queen referred to the place as, General Dollar, but it's Dollar General, um, to get some stuff for me to be hydrated while I'm out here. Hydration is important when you're out here. And I am guilty of not eating, or at times when I'm really into trying to make money, not thinking about um, hydrating myself. And so I try to do that. I try to get some something to chomp on, like sunflower seeds or some, um, some cashews or almonds. Of course, my queen can refer to them as all that stuff as bird, bird seed. But that's what keeps me going a lot of times when I'm out here. I'm not, as some folk out here who are out here who will stop and get them get themselves a full-fledged lunch or a full-fledged dinner and all that. Um, I feel that that stuff takes me away from money-making opportunities. That's just my opinion. But um, uh, once, I, once I leave from Dollar General, then I got to stop and put some money in a tank. And then I can probably say that I am starting the day. But I will say this about the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. Sundays and Saturdays are not actually um, day, money days for me. And what I mean by that, those are days in which I don't expect to make um, a, um, a high dollar amount. Sundays, I'm ho my hope is to make at a minimum $200 or more, but today it's going to be more like at a minimum of $215. And um, Saturdays have become a day in which I basically take the day off. Um, what's interesting about this week, though, is that Wednesday was supposed to have been that day because I had I um, had gone and got um, the front end alignment that was... That was um, needed after purchasing the tires the previous Thursday, 
but the guy who does the did the alignments at the shop was on vacation and he didn't get back until Tuesday last week. So, um, God damn, I don't even like talking about it. The fucking alignment cost me $125. The tires cost me $630, which was less than what I paid for initially. And again, I get it, man. You know, I fucked up with um, not getting a front end alignment or doing the front end work um, when I got the tires initially. But, you know, I got that shit straight. And then, of course, adding the $86 for the brake job. And you can throw in the $75 for the ancillary stuff. Um, yeah, I've had a, I've had a, a interesting week in terms of um, van maintenance, but it's stuff that needs to be done if you expect to be out here and make money. All right, well, I still not yet started the day, but I just left General Dollar or Dollar General, and um, I had a conversation with a lady. I told her about my YouTube channel, Gig Geezer, and she said, "Oh, you do DoorDash?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, I do everything." You do ship it? Everything. You do you breeds? I'm active on you breeds. Everything. Oh, okay, I get it. And then I shared with her how the gig economy is, what the gig economy has done for me. And I stressed it's all in how you make it work for you. And also, if you treat it like a business, you get business like results. That saying is true. You've got to treat this gig stuff like a business in order to get business like results. If you do it, do it for spare change, you get spare change-like results. If you're just out here just to be out here, you get fuck it like results. And so um, that go that just goes without saying. Um, you know, I know I'm sharing more of the the the, the mental and the strategic point uh, approach to it, but that's important, man. Um, you don't settle for mediocrity. You're constantly pushing yourself. You're constantly trying to stay current with things. And this is any any line of work. You're constantly pushing yourself to do more if you're dead serious about what you're doing. If you're an athlete, you're constantly looking. You're, trans, you're constantly disciplining yourself and trying to be a student of what you're doing to maximize your results as an athlete. Um, I know like when I've, when I've bowled, um, when I've bowled for money, and I'm really committed to, at that time, bowling for money. Well, I'm constantly looking, I'm constantly being on the watch for new equipment that comes out based on the brand that, I'm, that I use. Um, I'm always listening to conversations about different ball drill layouts. Um, now, not every, now, not every ball drill layout is gonna work for me, but at least I'll understand the characteristics of that ball drill layout and, and what it may do for me but you only know until you put the holes in the ball and then you actually start, you actually bowl with it. But all I'm getting at, a lot of the content that I share and other people share may just work for me only, but you, what you can use from this is the content that I share and others share, use it as somewhat of a guide and not gospel, a guide to how it can help you to maximize your operations, your grind, your hustle. And so she says, well, I got sh to share your channel with my son. Yeah, I can remember Gig Geezer. Yeah, I said, oh, I just remember the old guy. Okay. It's been about, I want to say an hour and a half since I actually uh, last documented something. And I've managed to stack a stack Instacart 19, 23 items total. Um, the offer amount was $32.08. It was from Target. There was four items on Target and then 19 items from Sam's. And there was one refund. And so um, the only way this is gonna pay $32.08 at least based on offer amount is if there is a flat tip on uh, by both customers. Otherwise, it'll probably be less. But the stacked opportunity that I got is a point pickup at Walmart down in the area that I'll be dropping off these other two um, um, these other two Instacart orders, and that's for seventeen dollars and change. So the geezer is looking at at a, somewhere is around forty eight dollars, maybe forty nine dollars if everything starts off right, and that put me easily well into twenty percent um, towards the goal of at least two hundred and fifteen dollars today. Now. Um, 
one thing that's about what's interesting about the Columbia, South Carolina market on Sundays is that shit gets off to a very slow start on Sundays. Um, you know, this is the Bible Belt, and um, you know, people sleep in or they are in a place of congregation, and so a lot of things don't get to going until around midday. But you just never know. I mean, so you try to get yourself out there, put yourself in a position where you may catch something. Well, I am three hours into this grind today. And I have earned all of $31.75. That Instacart, as I mentioned, um, was not a, did not have a, a flat tip. And so there was an adjustment of like, what, $0.33 cent on that particular um customer's order but after that I had accepted um, I had swiped for accepted that point pickup that was going to pay $17 and change I go over to the Walmart parking lot and let's just say that um, let's just say that I just had to uh, let's just say that I had to uh, throw that one back because um, I had waited for over 15 minutes now depending on the type of day that I was having I would wait a little longer for some for an item that's oversized but at that location where I noticed on the roadie um, blurps or on the ro roadie bubbles there was always multiple um, orders there for roadie and then that's that's a big that's a heavy um, heavily concentrated um, spark thirsty uh, location there's no way that they're going to get that order out to me in a timely basis. So I went ahead and requested that that uh, point pickup unassign me from that order. In fact, they said after 15 minutes, you can you can request to be, for it to be unassigned. After 30 minutes, they recommend that I go inside and tell them, hey, look, I'm here for this order. I ain't waiting no fucking 30 minutes. I just don't wait 30 minutes for things like that. I'm aware of people waiting an hour, two hours, three hours for for whatever opportunities that they're getting. That's just not the way I operate. So I'm looking at after three hours, calling it a day, calling it a week, and nowhere close to trying to make two pounds. In fact, I'd be way away from making two pounds. In fact, as of this juncture, I will be at like um, $1,819 for the week. So I wish that there would be more action to share with you right now uh, in which I might get closer to that number, but the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area has been rigor mortis, and there have been, and this is the time of year where it is rigor mortis, even more so. But what makes it, but what makes the, what exacerbates the situation is when you've got hypersaturation of drivers out there, and there's a there's less of a demand for the orders. That creates a very sparse situation, regardless of the number of apps that that I that you may be operating. And that in my case, I'm wondering if I would see any quality of orders on Uber Eats if my account was unblocked or at, at this at this juncture. But I've seen nothing on Grubhub. Um, I've seen a I've seen a spate of orders on DoorDash, and the best order that I had come across my screen was for eighteen dollars seventy five cent and ten miles. But I was in Walmart parking lot waiting on that order. And then I also still had the second half of the um, Instacart order to deliver. And I and um, the drop-off location from Walmart was like 15 minutes away. So there's no way I could have pulled that one off uh, without risk of a contract violation or worse. So... Um, I'm I, I'm not used to, I'm not used to sharing situations like this. I mean, I guess I've kind of run my luck in that. Uh, Wednesday was a day that I was going to take was going to do a half a day or just take off in its entirety, and it turned out to be a full day and a really nice day. Then yesterday, I my intention was to take the day off, and um, you know do do the maintenance on on the van, and it turned out to be a nice cameo opportunity three nice cameo opportunities but today different story all righty we're hours later and we're about seven hours into um today's grind it's gonna be a long day not the type of day that i like to put in it kind of reminds it's gonna be kind of like from what i can tell like last week last week sunday 
But anyway, I just completed the um, freight order. It was some some type of fencing, picket like fencing. Um, <clears throat> I I think what could be used for vegetables, um, vegetable garden, and um, that order paid seventy two dollars and two cent, bringing me to one hundred forty eight dollars and change. And um, I've got in pocket another point pickup that's for $18. It's actually one from earlier today, um, one that I threw back, but it's back out, and hopefully they'll have their shit together. If not, then I'm going to have to try to pull what I feel is going to be a minor miracle um, for this for this uh, second half grind in that um, I'm going to try to get to that 215 number, which will get me to two pounds. Um, if there's anything that someone can take from this is that you got to be relentless. You got to be relentless and you just got to keep your, your you just got to keep your focus while you're out here. A lot of this stuff is mental. Yes, there's the physical part, especially when you're doing when you start operating out of a, a sprinter slash cargo van and you you take on last mile orders like from Lowe's or or um, Home Depot and all. But um, the the fact is is that you got to be tough mentally in order to make this stuff work. So I'll get back with you once um, I've completed yet another opportunity or opportunities. Okay, I am very much pot committed to this now. Um, the update is that I did pick up the point pickup, which is for 1828. And before I picked that up, I happened to catch a DoorDash order for twenty dollars twenty-five cent. And so those two items that I'm stacking together, um, in fact they actually go to the same subdivision, which is a good thing. Uh, brings me to $187.25 for today and $1,974 for the week. So, all I need now is to make another $25. There's nothing guaranteed about that, but I um, another $25 and I'll be at two Gs, two pounds for the week. So that's the update. Well, I'm at the end of the day. And I'm going to tell you that this day has been one of the most trying days I've ever had out here um, in my gig hustle days and just documenting content here on the Gig Geezer channel. For the past, hell, like 45 minutes, I hadn't seen anything worth getting. And quite honestly, I was thinking that maybe I might need to just shorten my sights and just try to get the $200 today and just call it a day. Well, I'm at 187, 187, no, $189 and change. I still need $23 and, ch and change to reach 2000. And my man, Steve, I'm all, I always make reference to Steve, but truth be said, Steve and I have become like quick friends. And I've, and I've described him that he, uh, he has a, a sprinter slash cargo van. Um, he has a side hustle. Um, he's starting to make a transition to pretty much doing basically what I'm doing, where he's working the apps and um, trying to, a, a, in addition to his side hustles with his sprinter slash cargo van. And so he says, looks like, man, you might need to pull a trick play. And my response to him was, I don't think I have the personnel to even do that. And in my thinking then, when I don't have the personnel, meaning that I don't have the apps to be, it look like to make it happen, um, just using football terminology looks like I'm just gonna have to have the best, just, just have to beat them blocking and just bust a hole running. Um, no passing, just try to beat them running, keep the ball on the ground and try to make some progress. Well, all that is to say, we're gonna go baseball on this one. The count is three and two. Base is loaded, and I get a grand slam. I get a walk-off grand slam. That's right. This order comes in, $27.13, large order opportunity. And it's at a restaurant that I've, um, I've picked up from multiple times, and it's going to a subdivision that's literally 10 minutes from my house. So I get the walk-off with about $215 made, which was the goal today. In addition to that, two pounds, two, two Gs for the week, and I get to go home and see the queen of my life. All right, so I picked up the order, as you can see here on the inset, and while I was waiting for the order to be ready, I literally just kind of timed it just right where it was waiting on me when I went inside. 
Um, I scribbled down some notes just as summary of a week like this and a day like this. Even though I mentioned about um, how it's been a trying week for me, or trying how it's been a trying day for me, one that really tested uh, my being able to practice what I preach. And um, I'd like to think that I've been very consistent with that. Those who those who are in closer contact with me, like Stephen and the, and the Queen of my life, they know they know what I talk about away from the Get Geezer channel. And um, again, I like to think that I've been very consistent about that. But some of the thoughts that came to mind on a day like this, and just weeks like this, and just something, that, some thoughts that can be applied every day. Number one, don't panic. Even when shit just seems so fucked up and just going sideways in every which direction, don't panic. Um, I think that's something that I'm I'm known for, not panicking, trying to keep a cool head. Even though I can be I can be extremely volatile, I do try to keep a cool head in most situations. Most people know me for having a cool head and being and actually um, staying focused. That's something that I try to do all the time as well. Stay focused. Stay keeping your sights on your goal at hand, um, be it that day, that week, or that month. Another thing is surrounding yourself with the right people. Now, I am, I am admittedly an introvert. I am, by and large, a loner. So I don't have a large circle of people. But the people that who are closest to me like my daughter, my queen, and Steve. I mean, again, fast friend now. Um, that's that's my that's the extent of my circle. And it's not that I got yes people around me because they all would challenge me with things I've said and done. Um, but surrounding yourself with the right people, you don't need to have haters around you because they just siphon away, they just siphon shit away from you, man. Um, things just have a way of inexplicably failing to materialize when you have haters around you, especially people who are even closest, suppose they're closest to you, they are oftentimes your biggest haters. And this is a life lesson that I've learned. But keep that in mind when you're out here doing your grind and your hustle, be it in your car, truck, or for the sake of this conversation, Sprinter slash cargo van. Another thing, give yourself options. And in my case is giving yourself multiple apps to work with. Even though I was really severely limited today because it's a Sunday, it's, tick, it's often a slow day in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. But the fact that I had the right apps apparently today, um, those are the ones that got me to the finish line. But give yourself options. And one thing that I'm working on is to try to develop the cash, the cash side hustles. Um, which would be additional options for me in which that's money that I can report as saying earned although you know we're not going to talk about from a tax standpoint though but um, but at least money that could be claimed as earned for your business enterprise the next thing is of course as you're working with apps in fact you can say this in general though accept less earn more working multiple apps stacking multiple orders across multiple apps. It, it works when you're doing primarily gig food delivery work, and it also works when you're doing last mile work. If you're able to stack those orders, it will make a big difference in your day. Now for me, the big the big order in, in, in summary was really the freight order that, that um, earned me $72.02. That came at a time when I was at 60 something dollars. And it looked like it wasn't going anywhere, and I was about ready to just pack it on in. Um, but that was the big order for today. And then also, you can say another key opportunity was when I stacked a DoorDash along with a uh, point pickup, and they were going to the same uh, subdivision. In fact, basically around the corner from each other. So um, you know, those are that's that's a hundred. That was a hundred and that was like a hundred and. That was like a hundred and eight dollars swing for me, and that's basically half of the money that was earned on those two opportunities. So, I've shared enough in this segment of the Gig Geezer. Hopefully, you can get something out of it. Hopefully, you find it inspirational and also perhaps informative. 
And if you like the content that's been provided in this segment, the Gig Geezer, and any other segment, the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others. And by the way, um, before I finish out with this, the, the final total is right here on that DoorDash order. And the final totals are for the day. And, um, and with that, again, um, hit, the, hit that subscribe button. Give my content a thumbs up. Share my content among others. And I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm in with Lane. And as always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.